Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Wednesday, the 31st of May. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm delighted to say we're joined uh, by the second time this week uh, by Stevie Clifford. How are we getting on, Stevie? Good morning, everyone. Um, where's the sun going, Derek? Good point, actually. Yeah. yeah it, is, um, it is overcast here. I took the kids to school and had the shorts on. <laughs> and it's probably the one morning that I should have actually wore tra- trousers. So, and it's also school sports day today. Oh, I so love school sports school. day back in the day. Uh, what I, a day I, that I, was. I'm hoping they don't have like a dad race, you know, where they get them all involved. <laughs> and that. So, I'm, uh, I'm doing this and then very shortly afterwards, I'm leaving to go and watch the boys compete in that. So should be fun. Fantastic. What was your favourite race in uh, school sports day? Well, Derek, as um, as you might have noticed, when we get together, I'm not the most athletic star, so I like to wee egg and spoon race because oh, I'm yeah. about skill, you see, instead of pace. You know what I mean? So absolutely. Let us let us know in the comments, folks. What was your? I, I was going to see egg and spoon. That was a, an old favourite of uh, mine as well. But uh, yeah, I do miss that. There's guaranteed going to be a dad race stevie so i would just get i've just prepared myself uh, for for that uh right let's uh, talk rangers folks because of course good news yesterday uh the announcement of dujon sterling uh as uh, a rangers player he joins kieran dowell in signing a pre-contract he'll officially join the club on the 1st of July, he's penned a four-year deal um, and uh, he spoke to uh, Rangers TV uh, yesterday uh, and he said, I am really excited to come to such a big club. There's a lot of history and the supporters are so passionate as well, so I am thrilled. I can improve here. I have seen in the past players come here and show their worth, but for me right now, it's just about being somewhere I feel welcome and that I can call my home and show what I can do for the fans. It feels like I am one of the first steps in a rebuild I feel like I am an important piece as well, and everyone is making me feel like I am important. That is a good thing. This will be the first time in six years where I know what I am doing before the next new season starts. It is great that I can finally have a proper pre-season with the team and get to know them before the season starts. And he also talked about the influence in Michael Beale uh, and the role that he played in bringing him to Ibrox. He says, I got to speak to the gaffer straight away. I had a lot of clubs in for me, but as soon as he gave me the proposal of what he wanted to do, I left that meeting and I said, yeah, I'm signing here. I wasn't expecting to make my mind up about my future this quickly, but what he proposed to me was everything that I need. We were on the same wavelength. He believes in me and I believe in what he is trying to do as well. It was a no-brainer for me. Then added it was it was how, how much passion he has to win, how much he wants to see players succeed and how much he believes in my ability as well. He wants everyone in this team to be on the same page and I think that is important, especially if you want to be winning titles like this club really wants to do. And in terms of what the fans can expect from him, he says, I'm a hard tackler, I like to be in battles, I do like to get forward when necessary, but I always make sure I do the first part of my job, and that is defending properly. When I get let loose, that I can be a threat, but I always want to do my job first, because obviously we have 11 players on the pitch, everyone has to do their own job, and then if reinforcement is needed, then I'll be there. Dujon Sterling, uh, Stevie, happy. I think it was uh, it was well rumoured it was going to be announced uh, for some time. Of course, it finally uh, was uh, signed and sealed yesterday, and he was uh, unveiled as a Rangers player. Happy with this signing? Yeah, um, I didn't expect it so soon. I've got to be honest. I only got word yesterday afternoon that um, that the deal was was done and completed, and it was going to be announced. So. That was a, a, a nice surprise. Um I'm quite I'm quite pleased with it, Derek. I've got to be honest. I think he'll prove to be a very astute and, and solid signing. Um I think he's going to be no thrills. I think that's the, mm. that's the kind of defender he is. Um he's well built, he's he's a big lad, he's got stature, so um I think he I think he ticks a lot of the boxes, you know. We can all we, we can be positive about it, but there's the, the caveat, you know, I think we're all, you know, nobody's getting too carried away. I think it's um, one of these ones where we're all quite pleased, it's quite solid and it's quite quite a good, makes sense, sensible. We spoke about that a wee bit, um, Derek. Actually, um, this week, Joshua um, and I, we've, um, 
we decided that I would write a, a piece on, on the squad and where it is. And I was kind of looking at him and, and what we might have left at the end. And I think he can cover quite a few positions. He'll be centre-back cover. He'll also be right-back cover. But I expect he's going to be one of these guys that will push quite a bit. So I see a lot of people making the comparisons with Calvin Bassey and having the same kind of impact that he had. You know, if that works out the same way, then absolutely fantastic. But um, I think he'll be a very solid signing, young, ambitious um, and he's going to want to push all the way. I don't think he comes here, Derek, with a mindset that he's settling to be, you know, a backup or a rotational player. So I'm really looking forward to that kind of strength and depth as well. Um, so really pleased. It's smart business, Derek. You know, Kieran Dill, Dujon Sterling coming in straight away. I think these boys are are, are very smart, very um, very sensible signings. So very pleased about it. Yeah, makes sense, yeah. Derek. Yeah, absolutely does. Uh, lots of comments uh, coming in with regards to uh, Dujon. We're not having this. Any more mustard-related comments uh, should deserve an automatic ban, Stevie. Paul, you're, you're on a warning, buddy. Uh, so do you think, Sterling, that we'll cut the mustard? Uh, that is the end of that one. Um, Tim Sharp says, uh, another squad player at best. So uh, he's not too uh, enamoured by it. Uh, listen, I spoke to the... Uh, I'll stick it in the description box as well, folks. Uh, uh, Angela uh, Smith, who worked for BBC Stoke, obviously he's been on loan uh, at the Potters this season. She spoke very highly of him. Alex Neal was desperate to get him in permanently uh, this next season. Um, however, um, he's obviously chosen to go to Rangers and full credit to Michael Beale for persuading him uh, that his future lies uh, up north. Um, he can play both flanks by all accounts. He is uh, a big rugged defender, but he can get forward. Uh, as as I mentioned, Dujon did say that. So, uh, big unit of a boy, Stevie. I think, have we seen Michael Beale building a side here that uh, is... Uh, Almost, I mean, he, he's a big boy, Kieran Dill is a big lad as well. Adding a bit of physicality in that side, is that what Rangers need to, to compete with Celtic, do you think? Well, what do you notice of the four players that he's bought in so far? They're all young, athletic, mm -hmm. ambitious players. Legs, Derek, all of them can run. All of them, you know, have got bundles of energy and stuff like that. I think that's maybe more important than being big and being physical. I think the physical side of it, yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's much point in bringing in, you know, lads at the back that can't handle that, you know, without criticising maybe some of the signings last year. But the difference, you know, between physicality at the back and somebody that's a nice footballer, you know, maybe Ben Davies, gets shown here in Scotland because of the way our game is. So um, you've got to have that wee bit of physicality if you're playing at the back. But... I think that what's key to these boys is just what I said. I think they're all athletic. I think they're all got bundles of energy. I think they can all run. And I think they're all prepared to do that. So it's, you know, I think that Michael Beale's setting us up to set tempos and in, in games and, and be able to, you know, push our game on to others. So we said yesterday that the, the players are here back on the last day of, of June. So I expect these signings to keep coming. And that's two out of what I expect to be around eight coming in. So I think that they're two good starts. Um, really pleased. I think it's sensible. I just think it's clever. Yeah. Clever, clever deals. So, and we think about, you know, we spoke a lot yesterday as well about where we'll have money to actually spend. Um, and he's not got millions and millions and millions. He's got quite a good budget for a Rangers manager in recent years which I believe will be somewhere between 10 and 12 million. But we're going to have to spend that on forward players. We're going to have to spend that wisely. So we need goal scorers and they probably cost money unless we can find any that are floating about for free. So yeah, it's, um, this one makes sense. Um, and he certainly, as you said, he certainly got the physicality to be able to play at the back. But I like the fact that he's more athletic. He's very up and down. Um, spoke about this before, Derek. Don't know much about him. But um, for three of the last four signings, they've all played with Billy, um, either at Norwich or with Chelsea growing through. <laughs> is he, is he, is um, he doing the scouting work for I know, <laughs> something like that. So I'd actually spoken to him about, you know, what kind of player he was a few weeks ago. And the first thing he said, he was solid, defensively solid, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Very big, very good in stature, but will get up and down. So um, rates him as well, thinks he's a very good player. So... 
be interesting to to see how it works out. But um, again, I think it's just look, it's a sign, and we're entitled to look forward to it. It's freshness into the squad that we wanted. As I said, I think he'll push Tav at right back. I think he can play right sided in a three, and I yeah. think he'll be I think he'll be centre back as well. So if you look at the centre back positions already being Suter, um, Connor Goldson. Then right then um, Dujon Sterling. I nearly said Raheem Sterling there. Dujon Sterling. And then if you think about Leon King potentially going out on loan, that's a possibility. Maybe his future, I think he's one of the ones that, that can maybe leave the club in the summer. Certainly not um ruling that one out. And I think Ben Davies' time at the club is up. I think that if somebody comes in for him, Derek. So I still think we'll need one more. I think there'll be a left sided centre back come in. But that's almost your central defence sorted. Then you've got adequate cover at right back. Your left back position, you know, you've got two left backs there in Red Van and Borna. We need to find out what's happening well, with Borna. Yeah, I was going to say that. Needs yeah. to happen, doesn't it? So, and then, you know, your goalkeeper, you've already got two out of the three, potentially Jack Butlin coming in. So all of a sudden, very quickly, you're seeing it knit together, the back five positions, you know, plenty of cover and stuff in there. You've got Raskin and Cantwell, Lundstrom and Jack in midfield. I think we need one more in there and then he can concentrate completely on the forwards. Now, I don't think it's a case that he's not concentrating on that and he's not maybe further down the, the line than we think with certain signings in there. I think he probably is, but we've just not heard about them yet. So mm. um, I think it's knitting together quite neatly. Derek, I, uh, in my article that will be out this week on Rangers Review, I, I predicted that we would have 18 left in the squad. Um, by the time the summer positions. And if you're thinking about maybe adding anywhere between six and eight, which I think you'll be roundabout, then that gives you a squad of, of 24 to 26, which was where he said he wanted. And that's basically, you know, three goalies and then two for every position. So I think that's where we really need to be. Um, and I think that's where we'll end up. And that stream, streamlined it, the squad right down from the 34, 35 it was at, at the moment. So... Yeah. Sterling's a welcome addition. I think that, I, as again, I think it's smart. I think it's a sensible move. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you bring. It's a nice freshness already yeah. to the squad. Um, and we're only, you know, we're, we're not even in June yet. Yeah, uh, let's get a whole host of comments coming. Let's get to a few of them. Firstly, best race at uh, school sports day. William White says, uh, best, race, best race was at lunchtime to get fed first. Yeah, that was a... That was a, you, you, you turned into Usain Bolt, Stevie, I think, when the, the lunch bell went, if you were getting your school dinner, I think. Uh, you didn't want your custard cold, although uh, that happened regularly for me. Still still absolutely delicious, though. But, um, yeah, that's, that was a, a top uh, comment there, William. Um, interesting comment from uh, John. on Just on, uh, as you touched on, uh, Dujon, he says, he reckons he'll play left back. And Thomas McCrimmon, just off the back of that, says, if we sell Barisic, I see Sterling as a John Flanagan type, right-footed, playing left back. Well, as I mentioned, yeah, he can play on both flanks. And it will be interesting to see what happens. Uh, firstly, on that right-hand side, like you say, you will push Tav, Stevie. Can't see Tav being dropped in any way, shape or form. Uh, more likely, I th think you'd play in the back three, Dujon Sterling. Um, but he has the, the ability to play on that left-hand side. And you're right, jury's out on what's going to happen. Bon is going to enter the final year of his deal. Ridvan, of course. What's your gut feeling on Ridvan, Stevie? Because um, I've enjoyed watching him the last uh, few games. I would like to have him around, of course, as uh, constant murmurings of teams in Turkey, keeping tabs on him. Um, by all accounts, he wants to fight for his place at Rangers. I would like to see him keep that jersey going into next season. Um, what's your gut feeling? Is he staying around, you think? Yeah, um, I'm not entirely convinced, Derek, yet, because we haven't seen enough of him. But what I've seen, I've quite liked. Um, I thought he was fairly decent in the run-in. That Celtic game, I thought he was very good. Um, I've got reservations of whether or not he's the best going forward. His delivery, I think, maybe needs some work. But on the flip side of that, I think defensively, he's a lot better at stopping crosses and positionally, he's, he's better there as well. Um, I've also seen him reset a few times in games. And Celtic, he got caught out a couple of times in the first maybe 15 minutes or so after we went ahead, they came on a wee bit and they caught us a couple of times and he managed to reset and fix his position. So I think he might be quite an intelligent player in that sense. Um, I think that 
paying that amount of money for him last summer when we needed urgent work in other positions is was the wrong move. I think that 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 has been my issue with that signing, Derek. You know, to put out five six million pound potentially for him when we needed midfielders desperately. For example, I think that was wrong. But I think you might find that over time he'll be a decent enough signing. So it's one of those ones. Um, I think I need to see more of him before yeah. I'm completely sold. But I don't have a neg- negative view on him. It's just one of these ones where I think I'm looking forward to seeing more. He's got the right kind of energy. I just I'm not sure that going forward he's he's as good. So that's something to maybe pick up on. But you balance that on that if we have a, a prolific and and um, guy in front of him that's making chances and stuff, then it'll balance out between themselves. So with his running, which he does make a lot of good runs, he does make inverted runs as well. Hopefully that would make a lot of space for whoever's playing in front of him. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. The thing is about the last five, six games and, and something that I don't really want to fall in the trap of doing before. In these games, Derek, um, Celtic, Hibs, um, St Mirren, Aberdeen was probably Aberdeen was probably the toughest defensively. Um, the other ones were all played at basically second pace. Yeah, Celtic didn't come at us the way that they normally do. St. Mirren played it in a in a training game. So did Hibs. Um, Hearts was the only one that really had something to play for, and I think he did fine there. But I just need to see a wee bit more of him defensively. I said that about John Suter as well. I think he's done well, but these games were largely largely done. Um, so I think there's still a wee bit of convincing to do, but it's not, it's not maybe negative. I just want to see a wee bit more of him. I think he definitely he stays around unless somebody from Turkey slaps six million on your table and then you're looking at, you know, potentially being a, a decent deal to sell him on. But I need to see a wee bit more of him. Um, however, the freshness and, and change in the team. And what we've got to do, I don't think Michael Beale would be eager to sell him because there's there's another position you have to go and fix, maybe. Um, I still think that Barisic will stick around as well. I'm not too sure that he'll go anywhere. So it's interesting. I think Barisic might be one of those ones where if he decides I'm not signing a new deal, then they might do something about it. But um, given the turnover that we're expecting as well, I'm not, I'm not so sure. But Redvan will certainly be in amongst it think next season, Derek, unless there's a huge bid. Um, I'd just like to see a wee bit more of him. But he definitely, I think I think it's fair that he probably starts number one left back. I think yeah. that's fair. But with an eye of, let's see what else he can do. Yeah. Uh, that differing views on Redvan in the comments. Uh, Kev Armstrong, morning Kev, he says, uh, take your money back on Redvan, can't cross the road. Uh, and just off the back of that, uh, Delta Charlie says, uh, why are we obsessed with delivery into the box? This makes us easier to play against. We need to start playing through teams. Uh, so certainly uh, differing views uh, on Redvan. Both though, don't you, Derek? Because we've seen it when Tillman was playing and stuff. We could go through the middle, but we still need an option either mm. side. You know, we still, and that's the way we play with our fullbacks quite high. So I think he needs to do both. I'm not sure that he can't cross the road. I just think that Borna Barisic's delivery is so high and so good that whenever there's going to be a replacement, there's going to be a natural drop off anyway. But you can yeah. fix that, Derek. You can, you know, you can have him going to the byline and, and cutting it back. You can have him drilling it across. You can train him and fix that in the team tactics for him to do stuff instead of crossing from deep, which I would agree he's not he's not the cleverest at. So, and he's still young. He's still got a lot of football to play over here before he settles in. And as well, somebody in front of him would make the world a difference. So I don't think I'm writing him off as yet with regards to the crossing. But obviously when Borna comes out of the team, there's going to be a drop-off because his standard is so high. So I think that's all natural, but I'm not... I'm not ready to write him off completely as yet, mm. um, but I've, I've still got a wee bit of convincing to be done. Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, right, let's get to a few more of the comments coming. Firstly, John O'Rourke says, uh, Morning, lads. My lad Gio is offered to a holiday club today in Altingham with his Jers kit on. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, who's he named after, John? Is he named after uh, Van Bronckhorst himself? But uh, yeah, good, good to hear that he's... Uh, we are representing the famous at Holiday Club. Um, interesting point from Dean Milne. He says, if anyone is up late in Bors, if Fuentes is playing 
in the CONCACAF Champions League final at 3 a.m. The first leg, yeah, I mentioned yesterday, they're playing against uh, Leon uh, of uh, Mexico. It's a two-legged affair. Um, by all accounts, I think he isn't expected to start the game. There was an injury to, I think the boy's name is Acosta, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and he might have a chance at a starting, um, but it's like the likelihood is he'll, he'll, he'll uh, start on the bench for uh, LAFC. But that is an interesting one if, if you are uh, looking for some uh, late night football and looking at a prospective Rangers signing, then uh, certainly it would be interesting to see how he fares. Uh, he's another one in terms of uh, the profile, Stevie. We are expecting him to... Uh, that, that deal to be done uh, soon as well. I think once this uh, final is uh, out the way, um, but he fits the profile young, the right side of 20. He's a, again, he's another physical lad. Um, he'll just boost that that midfield area, won't he? I don't know too much about him, but from reports that I've read and speaking to people in and around uh, LEFC, then certainly uh, he certainly uh, whets the appetite. I think he, he would uh, do well in Scotland. He certainly has it, the physical specimen, I think, to do well. Yeah, and what's he got again, Derek? What did they say about him? He's very box to box, legs, loads yeah. of energy, loads of legs, athletic, you know, running, running power. So again, we're seeing a theme here of, of what Michael Beale's trying to do, especially when you look at um when you look at Raskin and Cantwell and what they brought to the team, then this boy potentially coming into midfield, I think's a, a very smart move. I think he offers a difference in there. Um said this before. Our friend Adam Thornton speaks really highly of, of what type of player he could be. So um, looking forward to that. We think, like you, we think that there is legs to that. We think it's further down the line. I wouldn't be surprised if he's already signed a, a Bosman for December. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's the kind of thing and then Rangers work on get them trying, to, trying to get that one over the line, maybe paying um, a small fee half a million pounds or whatever to bring him over um so i expect he'll come um i still think jack butland will come i still think that that's where we'll be in goals unless there's a big surprise unless you know there's something completely different going on there which you know understandably there might be um, it's never done until you see them at the training ground and stuff yeah um so i think when you start mixing that all in that would be four recruits in and so far for minimum outlay Derek I think that's very smart I think that's very clever and then you can start you can, you can spend your budget in other places so where we really need it which I think is the forward line so I think he's one that ticks the boxes as well um smart astute business makes sense got something to prove highly thought of he's another one Derek that years ago there was a lot of interest in him um high value money deals and stuff like that and then maybe he's come right, down yeah. a wee bit Right, so, sniffing about him. Yeah, that's right. For a lot of money, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. for twenty odd million pounds. So yeah. if um if we've identified him as somebody, you know, can't we always the exact same? And um these are guys that we need to give a home to and need to flourish. As I said yesterday, without repeating myself, we can't go out and sign guys for fifteen million. So we can't do that. We can't we need to buy guys that are got something to prove that are here to 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 win their next move and stuff like that. I think that's absolutely fine as long as it benefits Rangers. So what we can't do is what Tom's done there and negatively mm -hmm. go into it and write people off before they even arrive. We've got to trust the manager and embrace the change. Every single man and their dog wanted change, Derek. We all wanted it. We said this squad was boring. We said the squad was stale. We said we need there was a malaise at the club. Well, Rangers have acted. You know, there's six, seven, eight heads of department out the club now. There's a, a wave of, of interesting people being linked with the job, Derek. I heard a nice name being linked with the job yesterday for the, the football director's job to replace Craig Mulholland um, as head of the Youth Academy, and that was an interesting link. So some of the names that are being flung about for people coming in are interesting. They're young, hungry, proven points, um, and we're getting the same on the pitch. So I think we have to embrace it. You know, I don't want to be looking at it negatively. And I'm not saying that these guys coming in are going to be world beaters and, you know, 100% from the start. They've got points to prove, absolutely. But I'm just saying that we all asked for this. You know, I certainly did. I wanted to change since September last year. I was I was yeah. back on about it on this channel. So yeah. now that it's here, I'm not going to criticise it. I'm going to give it the opportunity and embrace it, see if it grows and, and see where it takes us. I certainly trust 
Michael Beale and his opinion enough, you know, and his eye for a player enough that we can we can trust what's going on off the park. James Bisgrove and, and John Bennett will be the ones to lead that. So trust them and, and see where it takes us. Can it be any worse than what we've had in the last year, 18 months? I don't think it can. And I think everybody, again, to repeat myself, has wanted that change. So it's here. Let's see where yeah. it takes us. Yeah. Um, loads of comments come in. Ross says, uh, great opinions, guys, but what does a pigeon think? Uh, unfortunately, said pigeon uh, had enough last night of uh, my hospitality and decided uh, he was heading back to his flock. I think they're uh, halfway down towards Africa now, so he's got some uh, catching up to do. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I asked him if he wanted to be on the show this morning, uh, and he said, uh, no thanks, guys. So uh, there, there you go. Unfortunately, that's uh, that's his prerogative. But uh, uh, comments coming in just on that cliffhanger there, Stevie. Uh, D, uh, Dean Milne says, uh, who's the name for the new head of you, Stevie? Come on. Uh, and a uh, comment here saying uh, we're all ears. Um, it's interesting. Interesting movement happening both on and off the pitch uh, this summer. Uh, that is uh, that is for sure. Um, uh, Donald says, uh, just on, on the issue of uh, on the pitch uh, signings, he says, uh, mature players, any thoughts? Now, of course, we've talked about these uh, young lads coming in, Stevie, and I'm all for it. I think I'd, I'd rather have players um, that have uh, that are on the right side of twenty that, that are hungry uh, and want to improve. Listen, I think they'll be coming to Rangers with uh, hoping that they'll, they'll, they'll play one day in the English Premier League. I'm quite comfortable with that as long as they do the business for Rangers uh, and they get that move. Then it means Rangers are performing well uh, as well as opposed to bringing in players that are at the tail end uh, of their career that we've seen quite a lot of recently. Now, Michael Beale did say there'll be some grey hair, uh, Addy. They did mean experienced pros as well. Um, do you think there'll be uh, one or two older heads coming in? We spoke about this, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago? And we said that there could be a potential because if you look at the market and what Stephen Gerrard did, you had um, Northern Ireland centre-half come in. And I always call him George McCartney. I always get them mixed up, and I can't remember who it was now. Do you remember the big, um, big tall guy at the back? And I got my picture taken with him, and I was up to like his his shoulder. Um, Stephen Davis's partner, centre half. I can't remember who he was. Played for Northern Ireland. He came in, and Gareth then um, that's it, Gareth McCauley. That's yeah. terrible, isn't it? Like my that memory. Is, is I always get him mixed yeah. up. Always get him mixed up with George McCartney for some reason. But he came in, then we had Jermaine Defoe come in, so there was that experience side. I wouldn't be surprised if there was one or two floating about from the Premiership that might take the manager's eye. I don't see us signing four of them. I think maybe one guy will maybe come in to offer something. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a forward player, somebody that knows the way to goal and somebody that's tried and tested. So I don't think there's much room. Maybe at centre-back, maybe if you know Leon King does go out on loan or something that they might choose to bring somebody like that back in so it's always a possibility what I would say Derek is you know on, on people saying any thoughts or any names or that I haven't heard anything um, you know there's a lot of people online that, that crave the old in the no tag and stuff like that Derek you yeah. know me I'm not one of those you know, I might be able to say to people when something has been confirmed or post up on the site that things are done and stuff like that but I'm very much not in the know of, of what's going on this summer. I hear the same rumours and things that everybody else does. So I'm very much waiting, much like other people, um, to see to see where we are and, and what's happening. You know, we'll try and keep you updated on on the review on four lads and stuff. But with regards to new targets and things like that, I know as much as everybody else, I'm afraid, which keeps it exciting, Derek. It keeps it. You know, it keeps the old interest going. It's going to be an interesting few weeks. I do think that a lot of them will be done by the time we come back for training at the start of um, July. Yeah. So it's certainly going to be an interesting time. Yeah, there's a suggestion here from Lennox. He says, uh, Jamie Vardy having a party in front of the, the Union Bears. That would be, uh, be quite interesting if that, that Ironic was... Ironically, Derek, I thought about that one the other day. I thought about that one the other you day. happy with that? He he's allegedly kind of got leanings toward towards us. Um, I'm not sure how true that all is. He's certainly a cracking player. Would I take him? Absolutely, of course I would. I think he's still got it. Um, I think he would flourish up here just like Defoe did, and Defoe was a couple of years older. I think Vardy's what 33, 34. 
So it would certainly be an interesting one. Absolutely would not would not turn that one down. I think that would be a cracking option for us, a cracking sign. That's that's actually the kind of profile I'm talking about, Derek. So you go out and you get a number nine who who's your forward thinking, you know, who's who's going to be the one, and then you get Vardy who can come in every sort of every wee while. So I think he is leaving Leicester though, isn't he? Isn't his contract up? I think they've said maybe that it's the end for him there. I'm not entirely sure. I but- double check. Yeah, uh, we need to have a look at that one as well. I'm not, you know, it's not one of those ones. But I did, ironically, when all the rumours about the the testimonial and stuff came up, he was one of the ones where you thought, well, you would take him, wouldn't you? So um, that kind of profile would be absolutely fantastic. Um, he might see himself having a year or two left down there before yeah. he considers that. But um, he's still in the mix of England and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, is that a serious question? Would you take Jamie Vardy? Absolutely, you would take yeah. Jamie Vardy. Kev, so, yeah. um, Kev says, weren't we, like under Mc- weren't we linked with him under McCoy? I'm sure we were back when, when he was uh, non-league, of course, and he joined Leicester initially. Uh, yeah. I'm sure he was one of the players that the Rangers uh, weren't. There was uh, a famous but... story, wasn't there, that John Brown was the one that spotted him mm. and, and they heavily linked with the club, but he chose to go elsewhere. So um, maybe he still kind of holds a torch for us a wee bit of, of that, but I, I don't know. I mean, if it's a possibility... 100% you would take Jamie Vardy, yeah. wouldn't you? So yeah. He's yeah, the he's type not. of goal scorer that you need, absolutely. Yeah, you certainly would. Um, right, let's get one or two more before we uh, before we wrap up for the day, folks. Um, first of all, uh, just on John O'Rourke, just on the, the name Gio, uh, good explanation, says, my wife is Italian, Gio is John in Italian, GVB was one of my favourite players too. Well, thanks very much for, for that. David uh, is watching us from Dubai, says, uh, morning from Dubai, lunchroom in Griegsy over here uh, at the moment. Yeah, I've seen uh, one or two pictures of them uh, uh, having a, a, a vino or, or two, so uh, yeah, down there uh, letting their letting their hair down. So um, yeah, say hi if if you, if you bump into them, uh, David. Um, and uh, just an interesting point, just on the striker front. This is a player that, of course, was uh, linked last summer. Uh, Alan says Derek would bring in Dost. Bass Dost, of course, he was uh, heavily linked uh, when Gio was the manager uh, last summer. Didn't materialise in the end. I'm not too sure where he is now. In all honesty, I know he was at was it Feyenoord or something somewhere like that. I'm sure, but. Um, yeah, big strong lad uh, up front, but I'm, I'm not sure that is a, a move that will uh, materialise. Um, and this is an interesting one. We'll finish up on this. Um, comments yesterday from Craig Moore. Ian Thompson says, any thoughts from Craig Moore's comments on picking up Van Veen for £750,000? Uh, he's a player we've discussed on the show before. Um, for me, uh, if we're keeping Antonio Cholak, I don't see any reason why uh, Rangers should be looking at uh, Kevin Van Veen. Um, what, what's your, your feeling on that, Stevie? I, I think, I mean, full credit to the lad. He's done absolutely sensational for Motherwell getting the goals he has uh, last season. Uh, would be surprised to see him moving on to uh, another club, 31 years of age. Uh, I think you can do the business for someone. Uh, not necessarily sure it will be at Rangers, though. What's your, your, your feeling on that? Still the same as last week, Derek. Still an old for me, so... <laughs> You know, um, I haven't heard Oz's um, words on that. Um, ironically, I texted him last night because he, he told me to watch a film called Air that's just been released. Any um, good? And it's, it's about how Nike got uh, Michael wow. Jordan to sign for him. It's actually fantastic. But I texted him and I said, it's unreal. But the soundtrack is from 1984, so some of the music's absolutely unreal in it. So um, I didn't speak to him about Kevin Van Veen. Would I um, want to sign him? It's the same answer as last week, you know. Yeah. So, not for me. I don't think we're spending that kind of money on him either. Antonio Cholak. I think the the noise is coming out of Rangers last few weeks is that he is hanging about, and he is going to be the one that stays. So, or or one of the ones that stays. So, I, I think my, my opinion on that slightly changed. I think Bill wants to see Antonio Cholak with a full preseason and and see where he comes yeah. back. And so, are we? Are we spending that kind of money on him just to come and be third choice, fourth choice? Don't really don't see know. it happening. You know, you've got this is, again. I spoke about this yesterday um, when I when I submitted my article to Joshua, which you can all read this week. In terms of forwards, you've got um, you've got Antonio Cholak, who I think is going to push whoever comes in. Fashion Sakala will cover the left hand side. Can also play as a nine. Then you've got Kamar Roof floating about. We're not going to get rid of Kamar Roof. Nobody's going to sign Kamar Roof. 
So what do we do with Kamar Roof? You need to try and make the most out of what he gives. And the Kamar Roof fit is an exceptionally good striker. Now, you know, we've heard all this before and somewhat almost expect it to fall flat on his face, but he's saying that his injury issues are over because I finally got to the bottom of it with his operation and that he feels that he's, he'll be fit and ready to go for next season. So if he's going to be fit and ready to go, Van Veen is coming in to compete with him to be third or fourth because you're looking at it being new, Kolak, Cholak, Roof, Van Veen coming in spending that money. No, I'm not. It's not for me. No. I've not seen much of him, Derek, in games versus Motherwell that's overly impressed me. And it goes back to the old thing that I said about people wanting guys like Duke and then Van Veen because, but they don't want Tillman who scored goals against the same team. So it's an interesting one for me, that that kind of, that kind of point that people put across. But Van Veen, not for me, Derek. You know, it'll be one of those ones that if he did arrive, you would get on board and back him. But I would want our interest to be elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same with you. Uh, and a quick word just before we wrap up for uh, young Zach Lovelace, Billy McCulloch, quite rightly say, young Lovelace doing the club proud. Scored yesterday uh, against Switzerland for England under 17s at the Euros uh, over there in Hungary. They won 4 2, and that seemed qualified as well uh, for the under 17s uh, World Cup also. So uh, good to see Zach uh, doing the biz uh, for his uh, national team. Uh, and a quick word as well, just before we go, before I forget, uh, for our podcast sponsor, Seneca Hair Restoration, uh, the number one hair transplant group in the in Europe. Uh, all their um, hair transplants are performed by doctors, so they know their stuff. They're a multi-award winning clinic uh, uh, used by uh, the ex-Scottish rugby player Tim Visser uh, as well. So uh, these are the guys to go to, folks, if you're looking for a hair transplant or to perhaps just restore some lost self-confidence. Right, folks, that'll do us here. Big thanks to Stevie uh, as ever. He'll be back on on Friday. I was going to say as we look ahead to a game, but there's no game to look forward to, which is uh, depressing, Stevie, isn't it? Roll on next season, I think. No, I'm look, also I, I quite enjoy the break. See, after the turmoil of the last season, it's nice to have a wee break. Um, yeah, nothing really to look forward to, obviously, but we'll always find something to discuss about. A wee word also, um, Derek, for Scott Arfield. Yes. On his um, goodbye note for the club yesterday, I thought it was very well um, written and, and a yeah. very good message. Scott Arfield, somebody that's always been absolutely brilliant with me. Um, a wee quick story about Scott Arfield. I don't know if you remember. Um, I think it was Hearts last year when we won 5 0. He scored. And I had the young fella, um, the wife had the young fella at the game. I was in the gantry. She was over in the seats with him. And she filmed him celebrating his goal. And he, and he off the cuff, without prompt, did the wee salute back to Arfield on the pitch. Not back to him, but, you know, he was on the pitch. And I put it up online. Unfortunately, I ended up taking it down because, because of four lads, people troll it. And some of the comments were a bit unnecessary over a wee boy that's you know six year old scott seen it and he ended up messaging me and said it was lovely let me sort something out for the wee fell and all that so um scotty is as a, a top guy every time we dealt with him in press conferences or we're up the training ground sometimes you walk out and the players are coming out he would always come over and speak to you and that ryan jack's the same tab's a very nice guy so there's a few of them out there that go out their way to kind of speak to you who, who know that you're um fan media and fans of the club and stuff. So I'd like to just say to Scott Arfield, you know, all the best for, for what's coming for him. You know, I'm sure he's going to be one of these guys that the support will follow and hope that he does well. I certainly want to wish him all the best. He's um, probably the toughest one of the five to leave, I think, um, in terms of wanting to keep him, not in terms of relationships, because obviously McGregor and, and Morelos and stuff like that are huge favourites, understand that. But in terms of one of these guys, I think he's just been unlucky with the, the squad needing a refresh and, and what the fans want and stuff like that. So, yeah, loved his message yesterday. Certainly all the best to him, Derek. Yeah, I'll just read the message, folks, if you haven't seen it. It says, uh, from 55 to Seville, the Scottish Cup and everything else in between, it's been some ride, but none are more important than you. The fans, players will come and go, but you remain the one true constant at the football club. Uh, your support uh, was never taken for granted. The reception I received on my last ever Rangers appearance at Ibrox will live with me and my family forever. It's been an absolute pleasure. All the best. Keep smiling. 
Scotty Arf. So uh, yeah, a lovely message on on his Instagram account. He leaves in a, a classy fashion. He's a classy guy, and uh, whatever team he ends up uh, at, uh, then they'll be uh, very lucky indeed because he's a top class pro both on and off the pitch. Right, folks, that'll do us there. We'll be back again tomorrow. Myself and Joshua will be on to talk all things Rangers. But until then, enjoy the rest of your